A special election in Pennsylvania this week seen as a wake-up call for the GOP heading into the November midterms. Democrat Connor Lamb's razor-thin lead in the race to replace Republican Congressman Tim Murphy comes in the unlikeliest of places, a deep red district in southwest Pennsylvania that President Trump won by 20 points. Republican strategist John Brabender served as a senior advisor to former Pennsylvania Senator and 2016 presidential candidate Rick Santorum. He joins me now from Pittsburgh. John, welcome. I'll tell you, the one thing that I really noticed here was that the Republican vote really fell off in this district from previous contested elections. What happened? Well, first of all, I think we got to be very careful and truly understand the district. This district, when we say it's a red district, it's a lot of Democrats who traditionally vote Republican. Uh, if you count non-Republicans, there's about a 72,000 vote majority for Democrats and independents. So uh, what historically happens in this district is Republicans do well because Democrats keep putting up very progressive left-leaning Democrats. Donald Trump won this district by 20 points because it was really Hillary Clinton driving a lot of those numbers, not just Donald Trump. So, so here we have a race where you know we already have a Democrat base that's enthused based upon the opposition, Donald Trump. Right. You have a lot of Democrats who just assume vote Democrat, and you have a Democrat candidate who came very darn close to running as a pro-Trump Democrat. That's what you need to have to win in a, a race like this, and that's why the election was so close. All right, but so, I mean, uh, Mitt Romney won the district, I think, by 17. Uh, Tim Murphy, when he was running, always had a pretty comfortable race. So there's this, this is, would you agree, a, a real warning sign for Republicans that if Democrats don't put Hillary Clinton on the ticket, they actually put somebody who seems reasonable on the ticket, they have a very good chance of, uh, of running the table and winning the House. Yeah, look, the, the mistake we could make is say, oh, this was an aberration, an anomaly, whatever you want to call it. There are a lot of messages in here. But it also is important to understand there were some distinctions. Tim Murphy was actually a pretty pro-union Republican, voted for card check and other things. And so the unions were very happy to have uh, somebody, a Republican, to support and oftentimes did. Saccone was nowhere near that type of a position, much more conservative on some of those type of labor issues. Right. With that said, the biggest thing that was disappointing to me is I saw a lot of research in this district and people were very mixed, for example, on the tax cuts. And here's a tax cut where 90 percent of taxpayers get more money in their take-home pay, yet they seem to be very mixed on it. So I think the real signal here is as Republicans, we have not always done a good enough job regarding some of our successes. Well, that's a key point on tax reform. This is something that the Republicans now are saying they're going to run on and the economic consequences. But if you look at the way uh, the Republican ran in this district, uh, he didn't really run uh, full-throated in favor of the tax cut. Uh, the Connor Lamb, the Democrat, he opposed it and said, by the way, because it increases the deficit, they're going to cut Social Security and Medicare. We know that this Republican Congress isn't going to do anything to Social Security and Medicare. How do you lose an argument based on a vote you're not going to have? Well, first of all, you also lost the argument on the weight of message. Connor Lamb outraised Rick Saccone by a five to one margin. And so he had the ability to get a much stronger message out there because of the weight of that message than Rick Saccone had the ability to do. There was a lot of independent outside groups that ran, but they really just tried to turn Connor Lamb into a Nancy Pelosi Democrat. Connor Lamb ran an ad saying, I don't like Nancy Pelosi, I'm not going to support her. And that message didn't work real well. But, but you're 100% right. The key moving forward for the Republican Party is we need to have a much better effective message on why these tax cuts are so beneficial to all Americans, not just wealthy Americans, but to all Americans. Now, Donald Trump, uh, I think, in part imposed the steel and aluminum tariffs because he thought it might help in this election in, in Pennsylvania, and yet it didn't. Connor Lamb basically said, I agree with the president on the tariffs, and the issue was neutralized. Is, is, so tariffs, were, were they a big issue here or not? Uh, it turned out to be a non-issue only because everybody seemed to be in agreement. As, as you pointed out, Connor Lamb said, wow, I think this is a great idea that we should take, take a look at. And so what you see is, again, there's a lot of pro-union Democrats here who sometimes vote Republican, but given them a candidate who checks all the boxes of the items important to them, 
They just assume vote Democrat. All right. Now, there's a big uh, redistricting that took place in uh, the dictate of the Supreme Court in Pennsylvania. And all the, in the, the districts that each of these guys are going to run in are going to be different in the fall, but they'll be different across the state. How many seats could Republicans lose in the House in Pennsylvania now, just, uh, just in that one state in November? Well, you could at least make the argument that as many as six seats, probably, maybe even seven, are in play. Okay. Um, you That's know, a there, lot there of seats. seats. It is a lot of seats. And actually, if you go back to years like 2006, Pennsylvania lost more House seats than any other state in the nation. Now, with that said, I do think Republicans have some very good candidates in some of these seats, better than the Democrat candidates. But take the suburbs of Philadelphia. These are always targeted seats, usually held by Republicans, and the Democrats try to challenge them. Uh, and as we know, the president did better in some of the more western right. conservative parts of the, the state than the eastern part of the state. But the, the way the Democrats drew the map, and let's be clear, when we say the Supreme Court, it's a Democrat Supreme Court. Right. The way they drew this was certainly to benefit the Democrats. Okay, uh, John Brambender, thanks. We're going to be watching this state very closely.